Welcome to the National Parthenon's Create Series, a way to learn as we create by using the Parthenon's architecture and the museum's collection as our inspiration. In this session, we will be using the capitals of the Ionic columns in the Parthenon's treasury to learn how to create a mathematical spiral in just a few easy steps. When looking at the Parthenon, it's hard to miss the columns. They are enormous and they are everywhere. These columns are all made in the Doric order. The Doric order was the preferred style of architecture on mainland Greece through the 5th century BCE. The columns sit on the base of the temple, taper as they rise, and are topped with simple capitals. Being in the Parthenon is a powerful experience. There are so many details from floor to ceiling that you might not even notice that there is something different about the columns in the treasury. These four columns are the only ones in the whole building that are created in the Ionic order. These columns sit on a decorative base and rise steadily until they reach the capital, which curls into a spiral known as a volute. Have you ever tried to draw the perfect spiral? It is so hard. Sadly, we have no surviving instructions from ancient Greece to tell us how they made one. However, in the mid 1500s, a stonemason named Andrea di Pietro della Gondola became interested in the architecture of ancient Greece and Rome. He traveled to see classical architecture in person and wrote books to share his new understanding of these ancient structures. He even recorded information on how to create a perfect mathematical spiral. His dedication to ancient wisdom led the Italian poet and scholar Tresenio to nickname him Palladio, a reference to Pallas Athena. Get it? Athena? the goddess of wisdom, the goddess of the Parthenon. So, Andrea di Pietro della Gondola became known as Andrea Palladio, Andrea the Wise One. Using Palladio's writings, we'll create our own spiral. You're going to need a pencil, an eraser, a ruler, some paper, and a compass Let's start by drawing a center line. Palladio calls this a cathedral, or the plumb line. If you're using a regular sheet of paper, you can measure four and a quarter inches on each end and find the middle of your paper. Make sure the ruler touches both points so that it's perfectly straight. Next, we're going to make several marks along our line at one inch intervals. After the fifth line, we're going to do a half inch and a half inch and then go back to one inch intervals. Now we're going to make a line that goes straight across the paper, crossing through our center mark. Be sure to measure it on your paper so your line is nice and straight. If you're using regular paper, this would be the five and a half inch mark. Now measure half an inch from the center on each side of our new line. Next, we're going to form a diamond by connecting the dots closest to the center of our lines.
From inside this diamond, we're going to create a square. This inner square should be about half of an inch long. Now let's make an X inside the square by connecting the corners. Let's pause for a moment and look at a larger version. This is the eye of the volute. Each corner is given a number, one, two, three, and four. For the inner numbers, we're going to divide the line into three equally spaced sections. The numbers will continue 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Next, we're going to take our mathematical compass and put the pointy end at number 1 and the drawing end at the highest mark on our line. Without changing the angle of the compass, we're going to draw a line from the top mark on our vertical line down to the horizontal line. Next, we're going to take the pointy end of our compass and put it at the number two marking. We're going to adjust our compass so that the drawing end lines up with where we left off and then we'll continue down to our center line. Next, we're going to put the pointy end on number three. And again, shorten our compass so that the pencil end touches where we left off. And draw our curve up to the next line. Then we move to four, and again, change the angle of our compass so that it matches perfectly. Use a gentle and steady pressure as you guide the compass around to meet the line. Then we move to point five, make sure you don't push too hard on the compass or it will start to close up as you draw. And that'll mess up our spiral. Now we go to point six. Shorten your compass and continue our spiral. And now we move to point seven. Next, we move to eight. Shorten our compass and continue to our top vertical line. Now we move to our inner marks. Starting at nine, we continue our spiral around. You may have to go over the line a couple of times if it's too faint. Now we move to 10. As the spiral gets tighter, it may be a little easier to hold the compass. Now we move to 11. Don't forget to shorten the compass. Now we finish with point 12.
and you've done it. You've made a perfect mathematical spiral. To help our spiral look more like a volute, we're going to repeat the process, but instead of reaching for the highest mark on our line, we're going to start just a little bit under it. You can make it whatever width you would like. And then we'll continue just as we did before. Now you can use your ruler to create the top of the volute. There'll be a straight line right to the edge of the paper. Continue adding details to create an ionic column or just enjoy your spiral. Remember, practice makes perfect. If it didn't turn out exactly the way you wanted, remember that this is just your first time making a spiral. Give it another try. You can go over the lines with a marker to help them stand out and erase our central lines. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're the first to know about all the exciting things happening at the Nashville Parthenon.